Hello everyone. Today we are going to see how to configure CQ and IO modules in Semantic Manager, and uh, we'll check the result in simulation. Okay, as we don't have any uh, PLC hardware, so how to check the result in simulation? That also we are going to check. Okay, we're going to see. So first of all, as you can see, we're having a uh, software Semantic Manager. You can see we should be uh, we should be installing the software in our PC or laptop, whichever the device is available. Okay. So in this, you can see there's a symbol here, step, symbol, and seven. Okay, step. Step stands for Siemens Technical Education Program. Okay. There's a concept here. So in this, we're having semantic manager driver. Okay. So it's a software package. Okay. For programming your 300 and 400 PLCs and configuring remote IOS, Profibus communication, uh, Profnet communication, etc. Okay. So all the drivers are available in this Semantic Manager. So double click open this Semantic Manager first. So we are going to work with the version 5.6. Here our software window semantic manager has opened. So maximize this window. Okay, so here to show you the step seven wizard new project. So just uh, if you go through this method. If we select, uh, you can select the CPU directly from here, okay. But uh, I prefer to select it from the new file, so I just cancel this one. Maximize the window here. First, go to the options. Select set PG PC interface. So, what is PG or PC interface? PG is a CMS laptop, okay, which they call it as a programming device. Okay, or field PG. Okay, so they are having their own laptop or proprietary laptop. Okay, through that, through that we can uh, <clears throat> have different types of uh, protocols for communication purpose. Okay, or we are using a general PC like we are having laptops. Okay, in that also you can install the software. So this is this interface is for your select uh, selecting your driver. Okay, for communication between your PC and PLC. So which Driver we are going to use, like we are using Profibus, MPI, Ethernet, okay, so that you can select from this interface. So when you select the PGPC interface, so you can see there are different types of drivers here. This is available here. So it is not showing MPI because MPI cable is not connected to my PC or laptop, okay. That's why it is not having PC adapter MPI. Otherwise, when you uh, connect the cable of PC PLC, uh, sorry, uh, that MPI adapter, it will display you the PC adapter MPI driver here. As we are going to work with the simulation, so I can use PLC sim. Sim means simulation, okay? PLC simulation. So here, I want to use like a Ethernet uh, CPU, okay? So Ethernet means definitely we have to use TCP IP addressing means that uh, <clears throat> TCP IP is like a Ethernet communication. Okay, so it's a Ethernet port. Uh, for that, we have to give IP addresses. Okay. So here I select PLC SIM TCP IP one and say okay. Once you select the driver. At bottom of the window, you can see PLC SIM PCP IP is displayed here. So whichever the dialer, driver we are selecting here, the driver should display at the bottom. Okay. 
now you go for the new project creating the new project file new so here we can give the project name okay like i'm giving plant one two three some name here so okay this is your project name which is stored in this part you can see see colon slash program files etc okay this is the location of your project okay now in this window you can see in the left window we are having our project name as plant one two three okay so right click on that project name go to insert new object in that you can see schematic 300 stations as we are going to see with 300 station okay series so select schematic 300 station the difference between 300 and 400 is the hardware part whereas the programming part okay is same okay programming blocks drivers are all same okay only the difference is coming with the hardware part okay now so for this uh, schematic 300 you can see it is showing you the icon of the module okay so you can do any name to this module like plc1 something or the process name also okay so that machine you are using for which uh, process or which controlling okay so what you are making you that by using that machine right so that name also you can mention now double click on the icon of the PLC. Once you select here, it is showing you the hardware. Okay. Now there is nothing here except hardware. So double click on the hardware. So that opens a separate hardware conversion window here. The window name is called HW config. Means hardware configuration. Okay. So this window is divided into three parts. As you can see, we are having three partitions here. The first window here is known as configuration window. At bottom is known as details window. And right side is known as catalog window. So what is catalog? Catalog is, catalog is having the list of your modules available in your Siemens. Okay. So in Siemens, what are the PLC types, modules, I input outputs are available? That is available here in the catalog. So to this catalog, we have to select our modules and add in our configuration window. So when you are selecting CPU, so first we are having is rack. For this rack, expand this rack 300, in that we are using rail. Rack and drop this rail in configuration window. So when you expand this, so you can see there are numbers here 1 to 11. So these numbers are known as slot numbers. Okay. So means if I add 11 modules in one combination in one rack, that is called universal rack. Okay. This is also called a rack. Okay. So 1 to 11. Okay. Means in one rack, I can add up to 11 modules. Okay. Including your power supply, CPU, interfacing module and remaining eight modules okay which are input and output modules or any other modules like communication processor module high speed counter or uh, any special function modules or uh, like uh, servo motors okay controlling a separate module is available okay so like that we have different types of modules which we can connect here in the slot number four to eleven okay so first lot is for your power supply but when i expand this power supply 300 you can see we are different power supply modules with 10 amps 2 amps or 5 amps so here 10 amp 2 amp 5 amps means if i'm having a cpu and uh, one or two input output modules i can use this 2 amp module okay if i'm having five six modules in this rack, for that I can use 5 amp module. But if I'm having more than five or six modules, okay, so I will go for a 10 amp module. Okay, 
here this power supply module is not communicating with cpu it is only for powering up your cpu and io modules okay so it is not mandatory for adding power supply module it is only for our information means what type of power supply module is connected with a cpu in the field so that we can understand the power supply scenario right means uh, how many modules will be there with the cpu okay to power up so what this power supply module is actually is known as smps okay it is converting your 230 volts ac to 24 volt dc to power up the modules okay now so here uh, i will select any module here like uh, i go with a 2a 2 ampere module okay that is optional okay if you if you want to keep it blank you can keep it blank also slot number 1 okay now slot number 2 is for cpu so i go to the cpu 300 here in catalog you can see there are different types of cpus here starting from 312 312 ifm okay so interface uh, module okay interface function module 312c dp okay point to point pn dp there are different types of modules here if you are having only dp means for profit bus communication or mpi communication you can use whereas if you are going with the ethernet communication so that cpu should have pn okay display on the cpu like we are having 314c 2 pn by dp in this when you expand this folder we are having a cpu type here product number product number is 6eh04 okay this is also known as mlfb number okay this is actually german abbreviation okay so uh, in english we can mention it like machine readable catalog number okay catalog number is there in that there have a cpu version 3.3 now you can drag and drop the cpu symbol from catalog to configuration window at slot number 2 So once you add the CPU here, it is asking for the Ethernet interface. Ethernet interface means that we have to mention IP address for this. Okay, Ethernet interface. Ethernet means for local networking you can do. Okay, whereas Internet is different. Okay, Internet is different. Okay, don't uh, just compare with this Ethernet and Internet. Okay, so here the both are using IP addresses. Okay. But this concept is different. This is a local area connection purpose, networking purpose. So here IP address one ninety two dot one sixty dot zero dot one. So here this is a default address here one. I can use a different address like ten, eleven, twelve, any number you can use. Okay, if you want to change. Okay, then below under subnet we need to add a network here for communication. So click on new and just go to the properties name. Internet one, okay. So this network is added here. See, okay. Now, with this CPU, you can see we are having different types of ports. With the slot number two itself, MPI by DP port is available, and Ethernet port PN IO port is available. That is port one and two. Two Ethernet ports are available with this CPU. Okay, so for both the ports, we are having same IP address. Okay, then DI twenty four by DO sixteen. DI means digital inputs twenty four. Twenty four digital inputs are there, and DO digital outputs sixteen digital outputs are available. Okay, whereas we are also having analog inputs and outputs AI five, AO two. Okay, now below you can see we are having. details here which cpu type order okay from where version from where version is a os version of this cpu okay the cpu is also having its own os okay and its ip uh, mpi address is 2 okay by default it will be 2 for the first plc when you connect any other plc on network it you can change it to 1 3 4 like that okay 
but for first PLC, it is always two. Then you can see DI 24 by DO 16 addressing here, I address and Q address. So here in CMS, we are using byte number address. Okay, byte means what? One byte means eight bits. Okay, so eight bits. So one bit means zero or one status. So one bit status is zero or one. So like that, we are having eight bits in one byte. So here, if I say 30, uh, 24 DI means 24 bits. Okay, so for one byte, there are eight bits. So divide this 24 by eight, you will get three, means three bytes are there. That is 136, 137, and 138. Okay, now for outputs, we are having only 16 outputs, okay, digital outputs. Okay, means only 16 bits. So there are two bytes only, that is 136 and 137. If you want to change the byte number, I want to start it from zero, okay, onwards, I can change this also. Here it is taking 136 starting byte number because it is a compact CPU. You can see the symbol here, C. C means compact, means some integrated IOs are available with the CPU, okay? Integrated in the sense like uh, we're having PC and laptop, right? So normal PC, which is having a separate monitor, keypad, mon uh, mouse, right? CPU unit separately, right? So we need to connect them separately. Whereas in laptop, all are integrated, means uh, everything is there in the same module, right? So here also we are having IOs, okay? Some limited number of IOs, just like digital and log modules are input or outputs are available in this CPU, okay? It can be in any range, it can be 32 inputs, 32 outputs like that also will be available. Okay, it depends on the requirement. Now, here we are having 136 to 138. Now, I want to change this byte number. Double click on this. Go to the addresses here in the properties. What addresses? Here it is showing system default. So, by system default, it takes 136. You can change it by removing system default option. So, here I make it to zero. Also, I make it to zero. So, okay. Here you can see byte number for I address is starting from zero, one, two. For output also, it is starting from zero and one. Okay. Now, after this, save and compile. Save and compile means, yes, uh, compiling means checking for the errors. If there are any errors, it shows you a message here. If there is no error, it won't show any message. Okay. It will compile and check the status and save your configuration. So you must do save and compile always. Okay. Then we need to download this hardware configuration. So that you can see we are having this download to module option. Okay. Another option is upload to programming device. Download means from PC to PLC. Okay. We are making logics in PC and then downloading this to the PLC hardware. Whereas uploading means if we don't have any logic with us, someone else has downloaded the logic in PLC or you are downloaded the logic in PLC, but you don't have the logic with you. So what you can do is you can upload it. Okay, so this is the upload option for okay, your device. Okay. So this is only for hardware. So before downloading, okay, we need to start our simulation because we don't have a hardware with us, so we use a simulation. So for starting simulation, go to the schematic manager. On toolbar, you can see we are having this button here on toolbar, simulation on or off. So when you click on this button, it opens one more window here. With the name PLC Sim 1. Okay. It is our PLC simulator. You can see here. This showing the CPU details like uh, different LED status. What we are having on the CPU. Okay. DC means uh, supply voltage supplies uh, status. 
BP means uh, if you are using profit bus communication, SF means uh, system fault. Okay, if the system fault occurs, it will display a red symbol here, okay, red LED here. Whereas for DP, if there is any profit bus disconnection, it will show you the red LED here or it will be flashing. Okay, so we have different options here like uh, run P, run and stop. Run P means run program. Okay, means you can in this position you can uh, modify your logic and download online also. Okay, so you no need to stop your CPU and again download and then go back to the run mode. Okay, that is in this case. If you are keep it, keeping this in run, then you cannot download the logic. Okay, you can only uh, <clears throat> means monitor the logic, but you cannot download. Okay, modified logic. So you can. In this position, uh, stop. You can you can download the logic. You can uh, upload the logic. Okay, but you cannot run the logic. Okay, so you should keep this in run P mode because we will will be keep changing our projects. Okay, logics modification will be there. So whenever we download the logic, okay, should not show any error. Okay, you no need to go to the stop. Okay, so keep this in run P mode. Next window you can see here IB0, I input, B means byte zero, byte number zero, starting from byte number zero, it is having eight bits, okay, zero to seven. So you can see when I make this on here, tick mark here, it is going tick, right? Means it is on status. If I am using a switch or a push button, okay, means I operate a switch, means tick mark means I am operating, the switch is on. If I Make it uh, uh, toggle it again. There's an off condition, so I'm toggling the switch off. Okay, so like that. Okay, so we can operate this inputs for outputs for your input status. We are writing a logic which output should be on. So that particular output will go on here to the logic. Okay, that you can monitor the status here. Okay, output Q means output by zero. Okay. So I minimize this block, go to hardware configuration window and download this configuration first. Download the module. This is a target module where you have to download. So okay. So here directly click on download. Okay. The following modules will be stopped for loading of the system data. Means whenever we download hardware configuration, okay, CPU of PLC goes to stop mode. Okay. It always go to stop mode. And whenever we are going to download program blocks or our program logics, okay, the CPU does not go to stop mode until there is an error in the program. Okay, say so, okay. You want to restart? Say yes. Now our hardware condition is downloaded. So minimize this. Now here you can see in schematic manager, this shows you the hardware plus CPU which we have configured. Okay. So from here also you can expand this PLC1, CPU, a seven program. In this you can see blocks. We're having system data. System data means it's our CPU files. Okay. Uh, here we are configured hardware, right? For that hardware, what how many inputs or outputs are there? How many timers, counter files are there? Okay. How many bit memory are available? Okay. So that information is available in the system data. So here the thing is here I no need to open this hardware configuration again and again. Okay. To download. If I need to download or update my hardware, means uh, for updating your hardware, you must open. Okay. You need to modify any module, any more modules you are adding here. So you need to modify, then save and compile again always, then download, okay? But if I don't want to modify and simply download the hardware, you can download this hardware configuration from here, okay? Just select this block and download from here, okay? That's the advantage here. Then OP1. OP1 is an organization block, which is a main programming block. So here we have to start our program. So double click on this. The name will be OB1 only, so you cannot change this name. If you want to change, give any name. So for that, go for symbolic name, okay? So like, uh, okay. 
और ये मेन ब्लॉक पास ओपन भी ओपन योर प्रोग्राम ब्लॉक या You can see here that I'm Obi Wan, which is a main program sweep, okay, or cycle block, okay. So out of all the different types of block, which are the blocks we are using, Obi Wan is a main block, okay. Now here we are having network. Network means, see, here we are going to learn ladder logic. Ladder means we are having steps, right? In ladder we are having steps. So here. Execution order is from top to bottom and left to right. Okay, so here it is first network. If you want to add one more network, you can check on toolbar. New network option is here. Select this. If you want, you can select here in the uh, <clears throat> instruction list window here. Okay, new network, or you can right click insert network. Okay, so this way you can add up more networks here or steps. Okay, now for making our logics here, go to the symbols you can see on toolbar. Normally, open contact, normally close contact, and output coil. Okay, these are the symbols which we mention in software. Okay, for outputs we mentioned as a coil, and for in NONC we mentioned as a contacts. Okay, now a network point. I use one, you know, and one output point. Then I give the address i zero point zero. Okay, no need to worry. Just we need we need to minimize this windows here. One second. Okay. So whenever you press enter here in Windows 10, okay, this is uh, minimizing, so you no, no need to worry. So just uh, enter, minimize other windows, and when you enter the addresses, okay, it will be in the same window. Now, I save this window here. Next is we need to download this program. So you can see we are having this download button. Select this download button here. It has downloaded our program. To monitor the program, go to the monitor on or off. Okay. So here, before monitoring, if I open simulator, okay, you will see sim. And here you can see I'm having byte number zero, bit number zero. Right. So this is byte number zero dot bit number zero. So when I operate this input here. You can see this output is on. So when I make it off, output is also off. Okay. Means once you download this into the PLC, so PLC is uh, executing your logic. Okay. So here in PC, in our PC, if you want to monitor that logic, once you connect with the PLC, here you can see we are having this monitor on off symbol. Okay. Select on this specs symbol. Now this comes online with the PLC. So here, when you select this, this is on. Okay, so your output is also on. So when you make it off, your output is also off. Okay. Now, so this is about how we configure our PLC software. Okay, for programming, basic programming. So next part we we'll see in the next videos. Okay, I will post uh, like uh, latching circuits, timers, counters. Okay, in different videos, so you can check with those videos how to configure timer, counter. Okay, <clears throat> FC, FB. Okay, function, function blocks. Okay, that all we we'll see step by step. Okay, I will upload all the videos one by one. Okay, so you can. Go through them. You can monitor them. Okay, you can watch them. Okay, and the most thing is, don't just uh, watch the video. Okay, you can uh, observe. Means 
when I'm making the inputs on or off, observe there what is happening. Okay, when I make the input on and when I make the input off, what's the output status, how the instruction is working, that observation is important. Okay, so you have to understand the instruction first. Okay, that is very much important here for learning your PLC. Okay, so <clears throat> we continue in the next 